Welcome to another edition of LabCast. In this edition, I'll be demonstrating the dissection of the common earthworm, which is a, a nelid. It's a segmented worm. Very common, you see them all the time. And uh, we'll be comparing the structure of the earthworm to that of the ascaris, or pig roundworm, which I dissected in a previous edition of LabCast. As for all dissections, you need three general pieces of equipment to complete this activity. You'll need a dissection kit with a scalpel and probe. You'll need a pair of rubber or latex gloves. And you'll need a dissection pan. All right, let's get started. Here you see a preserved earthworm specimen. It's much easier to work with preserved specimens than fresh ones. And uh, let's just observe the external anatomy. The earthworm is an anelid, which is a segmented worm. If you look carefully, you can see ridges or rings all along the length of the earthworm. These rings are numbered, starting at number one at the tip. This is the anterior end, and then down to the end or posterior end. And depending on how long your earthworm is, it'll be a, a different number of rings. In the center here, you see a um, different colored ring, a little larger ring. And this is called the slatellum. And uh, this is uh, an area that kind of divides the earthworm into the posterior back end or anterior front end. We're going to find the digestive um, structures, the pharynx, um, uh, which is the mouth, the gizzard, the crop, hearts, seminal vesicles up in the anterior end. And then the entire uh, back end, the posterior end, is the gut or the intestines of the earthworm. I'm going to use a couple of pins to secure my earthworm to the dissection pan. This makes cutting quite a bit easier. I'll put one in the front end and one in the back end and stretch the earthworm out. It makes it a lot easier to cut through. Next I'll take my scalpel and my probe and I'm going to begin by making an incision from the slatellum down towards the posterior end. The earthworm is uh, very soft and it's important that you don't cut too deep otherwise you'll damage the organs underneath the skin. So I'm going to make a shallow incision and then I will use my probe to open that incision further. Take some more pins to open the body wall. And like I did with the ascaris, I'm going to angle these pins outward so that I still have access to the center of the earthworm. The earthworm is the first organism that has a true coelom which is a body cavity that separates the epidermis or the skin from the internal cavity which can be the digestive or thoracic cavity with the heart and lungs. One thing you'll notice as you begin opening the earthworm is that the rings go all the way into the center and you actually have to break them off in order to open the outer covering of the earthworm. The coelom is a very important physiological uh, feature. It protects the internal body organs, enables advanced digestion, movement. So as I open this, you can begin to see the long intestines of the earthworm. Earthworms feed on decaying matter, uh, leaves, dead animal material, and are responsible for enriching the topsoil uh, by fertilizing the soil through their waste. 
They're very, very important organisms. It's estimated that there are about 50,000 earthworms in one acre of good farm quality soil. So I've opened a good portion of the posterior end of the earthworm and in zooming in you can see it's very simple there's not much to see really. Here I have a digestive tube this would be the intestine and if I am to open that up you will find dirt inside. To the left and to the right of the digestive tract I have two lines which could be either the um, veins and arteries which are responsible for circulation or they might be part of the nervous system which controls and how the earthworm moves and what it can feel. The posterior end of the earthworm is fairly simple and if we were to continue opening the earthworm all the way to the very end we would see more of the same. A little bit more interesting is the anterior end of the earthworm um, from segments number one down to about segment number 33 right here. And that's what we'll open next and we'll see something quite a bit different. At this point it's very important that you make a, a shallow incision. If you cut too deep you will damage the delicate internal organs underneath. made an incision. Now I'm going to use my probe once again to widen and separate that cut. Then I'll pin it open. At this end of the earthworm we're expecting to locate the reproductive organs, the circulatory organs such as the heart, and more of the digestive system, specifically the crop, the gizzard, and the pharynx. Zoom in on this a little bit. So what you see here, starting at the very tip of the earthworm, we have the pharynx, which is a muscular mouth-like structure that swallows food. Below that you will see a series of um, tiny black threads and while they don't look like much these are the hearts of the earthworm. They're not hearts as you would picture in human hearts. They don't have chambers, valves like we do. They're simply um, hollow tubes that are muscular and squeeze which provides the pressure the earthworm needs to circulate blood all the way to its tail and back again. The earthworm has a closed circulatory system. Below that, these white structures are part of the reproductive system. These are the seminal receptacles. Um, the earthworm is hermaphroditic, meaning it has both male and female reproductive organs. It produces both egg and sperm. Below that, we can see the first signs of uh, the intestines right here, which lead into a very hard structure, which would be the crop, and then the gizzard below that. The crop and the gizzard are the earthworm's version of the stomach, and this is where pre-digestion takes place, and the nutrients are passed into the intestines where they are absorbed into the body. These are the primary parts of the earthworm. Another part that is present but is very difficult to find is the cerebral ganglion or the brain of the earthworm. It is at the very, very tip of the earthworm but it is so small it's almost impossible to find. The earthworm is the first organism, um, one of the simplest organisms to demonstrate cephalization in that it has nerve cells and brain cells 
concentrated at one end. So unlike the Ascaris, which we looked at in a previous episode, the earthworm has a uh, reproductive, digestive, circulatory, and nervous system. So it's exhibiting many of the same features, uh, body structures that humans do. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy your dissection.